Our next speaker is coming to us from Indiana University. This is Dr. Robert Tarver, who will speak to us on bronchial and segmental anatomy on both chest radiographs and chest CT. Good morning. This is Bob Tarver. I'm a chest radiologist from Indiana University School of Medicine. I've been a chest radiologist about 40 years. And thanks for joining me today to learn about bronchial anatomy. Hopefully by the end of the talk, you'll be able to go over the chest radiograph here and tell your thoracic surgery or pulmonary colleagues exactly which lobe and which segment this lesion is in. So the goals will be to review the lobes and segments on CT and chest X-ray so you have a better understanding and a better way to communicate with your colleagues. A long time ago in 1949, this is a lecture that was given and he started out by saying it was universally accepted. Nowadays, we need to figure out the proper names for the segments, but undoubtedly there's little interest in the medical profession but those of us present today have a vital interest because they've been bitten by this bug of curiosity. So hopefully I can convince you of the interest and you be bitten by the bug of curiosity of the segments of the lung. So really the major fissures and the minor fissure is what helps us start off with the different lobes. As you know, the lower lobes are cut off from the other segments by the major fissure and the middle lobe and upper lobe on the right are <clears throat> cut off by the minor fissure. The right upper lobe appears to the entire right apex of the lung down to the level of the minor fissure seen as a straight line at the bottom of the right upper lobe. It has an apical posterior and anterior segment and you can see how the lateral depiction of the right upper lobe shows a minor fissure on the bottom and a little bit of major fissure <clears throat> on the posterior aspect period. When you go over these segments where they would appear on the chest radiograph, the apical segment is clearly differentiated from the anterior and posterior on the PA film. On the PA film, the anterior and posterior may overlap each other, but when you combine it with a lateral film, you can clearly see the anterior and posterior segments are easily differentiated. The right middle lobe is familiar to all of us with the smooth upper border representing the minor fissure, and it has a lateral and medial segment. On the lateral film, the minor fissure is at the top of the right middle lobe and the major fissure is posteriorly. The lateral and medial segments overlap each other on the lateral film. On the PA and lateral, you can see on the PA, clearly the lateral and medial segments can be differentiated. However, on the lateral sec view, the lateral and medial segments may overlap. The right lower lobe has five segments. The superior segment, which does not touch the diaphragm, and then the anterior, medial, lateral, and posterior segments. On the lateral film, you can see how the major fissure described to the anterior border of the right lower lobe and the superior segment does not touch the diaphragm. And then the five, four basal segments do touch the diaphragm. On the PA and lateral, you can see the superior segment is clearly differentiated on either the PA or the lateral. However, on the PA and lateral, the anterior and lateral would overlie each other on the PA film as with the posterior and medial segments. And similarly, on the lateral film, the anterior and medial would overlie each other and the posterior and lateral would overlap. Good way to look at it is this drawing showing the relative positions of the anterior, medial, lateral, and posterior segments of the right lower lobe. And you can see if you had a PA and a lateral chest, you should be able to figure out which segment the lesion is in. The left upper lobe, of course, has to be different. The apical posterior bronchus is one instead of being an apical and a posterior. Then there's the anterior, superior, and inferior lingular segments. 
On the lateral view, there's the apical posterior, the anterior would touch the back of the sternum there, then there'd be the superior ingular, and then the inferior lingular segment. And they're fairly well differentiated on either the PA or the lateral film. The apical posterior, then a little bit lower, the anterior, then the superior lingular touches the upper left heart border, and the inferior lingular touches the lower left heart border. The left lower lobe is different than the right lower lobe as well. There still is a superior segment. The anterior medial segment is combined. You can sort of say, well, the heart's sort of in the way. There's not enough room to have a separate anterior medial. And there's also a posterior and lateral. On the lateral view, you can see the major fissure forming the anterior border of the left lower lobe. And once again, we have the superior segment, the anterior medial, the lateral, and the posterior segments. The superior segment is clearly identified on either PA or lateral chest, but the basilar segments overlap on the PA and the lateral, but you can work it out if you have both views. Just like we did in the other side, you can see on the CT scan a drawing showing approximate location of the anterior medial segment, the posterior segment, and the lateral segment. You can see where the major fissure is separating the lower lobe from the lingula. Next, we'll go over the CT anatomy of the airways. Here you can see quite clearly the trachea, the carina. And the first branch off that we see is the right upper lobe bronchus. The right upper lobe bronchus and this plane divides into the anterior and posterior segments. And as we move more superiorly, you can see the apical segment. A little bit further superiorly, here's another depiction of the apical segment. So the right upper lobe has apical, anterior, and posterior segments. As you move further down from the right upper lobe, you have the bronchus intermedius. The end of the bronchus intermedius is at the where the middle lobe bronchus comes off and where the superior segment of the right lower lobe bronchus originates. That's the end of the bronchus intermedius. Anteriorly, you can see the right middle lobe origin, and posteriorly, you can see the superior segment of the right lower lobe bronchus. The right middle lobe is then divides into the medial and lateral segments. The right lower lobe continues inferiorly. Medially, you can see the medial segment bronchus. A little bit lower down, you can see the anterior segment bronchus. And as you continue down where you can see the right lower lobe lateral and posterior segments. The left upper lobe, of course, is different. Remember that apical posterior is the superior most in the left upper lobe. A little bit further down, you can see the anterior segment of the left upper lobe come off. This is a transition between the left main stem bronchus and the lingula. And here we see the lingular bronchus. It divides into the superior lingula and a little bit lower, the inferior lingular bronchus. The left lower lobe bronchi begins highest with the superior segment bronchus. Oftentimes the superior segment bronchi are at the same level the right and the left coming off and going posteriorly. Then you have the start of the basilar segments. They haven't divided off yet any of the basilar segments. The first one to come off would be the anteromedial segment. Here you can see the anteromedial, the lateral, and the posterior segment. A little bit lower down, you can see the posterior and lateral segments. On the coronal view, sometimes it's helpful just to review the anatomy. You can see at the level of the crina, you can see the bronchus intermedius, you can see the right upper lobe take off, and you can see the apical segment of the right upper lobe. Moving anteriorly, you can see the anterior segment of the right upper lobe, and below you can see the right middle lobe bronchus. More anteriorly, you can see where the lateral segment of the right middle lobe bronchus is coming off. 
a little bit more anteriorly, you can see the medial segment of the right middle lobe. If you move posteriorly from the level of the carina, you can see the posterior segment of the right upper lobe dropping straight posteriorly. At the level of the carina, you can see the right upper lobe, the bronchus intermedius, and the left main stem bronchus. As you go further back, you can see the posterior segment of the right upper lobe, and you can see the superior segment of the right lower lobe coming off and dropping straight posteriorly. Moving a little bit more anteriorly from that, you can see the anterior segment of the right lower lobe and the medial segment of the right lower lobe. A little bit more posteriorly, you can see the lateral segment and the posterior segment. Oftentimes you have to follow these back and forth as you scroll. Moving to the left, you can see the left main stem bronchus. A little bit more anteriorly, you can see the origin of the left upper lobe apical posterior segment. Here you can see the anterior and lingular bronchus starting to split off. Coming more anteriorly, you can see more clearly the anterior segment left upper lobe and the lingular segment of the left lower lobe. And as we come more anteriorly, you can see the anterior segment, left upper lobe, and the superior and inferior lingular segments. And as you move further anteriorly, they separate more into the anterior, superior, inferior. You can see their relative locations on the CT scan. As we go back to the left main stem bronchus, and explore the left lower lobe, you see the left lower lobe bronchus going inferiorly there. If you move posteriorly, you can see the superior segment dropping straight posteriorly. Anteriorly, you can see the anteromedial segment come off. Here it is again. The anteromedial, of course, is going to branch into an anterior medial segment, but they're called subsegments at this point. More posterior, you can see the left lower lobe lateral segment. And then you could see the left lower lobe posterior segment. Further back, you can see the posterior segment extending inferiorly and going on down. As we all know, we recognize the back wall of the bronchus intermedius, as you see on plane films. Then we're going to move over to the right side. You can see the right upper lobe bronchus, the right middle lobe bronchus, and the right lower lobe bronchus coming off the right bronchial tree. In the upper lobe, you can see the right upper lobe apical segment. Then you can see the anterior posterior segment of the right upper lobe. Moving back to the bronchus intermedius, then starting down, we can see the right middle lobe bronchus. Here you can see the right middle lobe bronchus branching from the medial to the lateral segment. Moving to the right lower lobe, you can see the superior segment of the right lower lobe extending posteriorly. Then the posterior segment of the right lower lobe. Here's the anterior segment of the right lower lobe. Once again, on the, these coronal and sagittal views, you have to scroll through to make sure you have the right bronchus identified. Moving back to the left main stem bronchus, where it transitions to the left upper lobe bronchus, you recognize this round hole you see on the lateral chest radiographs. Here's a good depiction of the apical posterior bronchus coming off for the left upper lobe, and you can see the lingular bronchus coming off for the left upper lobe. A little bit more laterally, you can see the apical posterior, the anterior segment bronchus, and the lingular bronchus, their relationship. And then a little bit lower, or more laterally and lower, you can see the inferior and superior lingular bronchus. A little bit further laterally in the chest, 
slice that you can see the superior and inferior lingular bronchi. In the left lower lobe, and the you can see the superior segment, it has about the same location on the right as it does on the left. You see the anteromedial segment come off of the lower lobe and the posterior segment of the left lower lobe. Then the look, continuing down and more laterally, you can see the anteromedial and the lateral segment bronchi of the left lower lobe. Now, We've reviewed the anatomy. Let's go back and see if we could figure out where this lesion would be. So on a PA film, it could be in the medial segment of the right middle lobe, or it could be in the medial or posterior segment of the right lower lobe. On the lateral film, it could be in the anterior or medial segment of the right lower lobe, or the anteromedial segment of the left lower lobe. However, when you put it together, we know that it's in the medial segment of the right lower lobe. So hopefully, after we've reviewed the anatomy of the chest x-ray and CT, where the lobes and segments are, you have a better understanding of where these bronchi are so you can communicate a position of a lesion better to the other physicians who care, which are usually the pulmonologists and the thoracic surgeons. Things you need to remember is the right middle lobe is medial lateral segments versus the lingula, which has superior and inferior segments. The left upper lobe, instead of having an apical and a posterior, they're joined together to form the apical posterior. The left lower lobe, the anterior medial, instead of an anterior and a medial. And remember, the superior segments of both lower lobes are called the superior segments, not the apical segments. So thank you very much for your attention, and hopefully you were bitten by the bug of finding out about the bronchi. Thank you.